Yo guys, how's it going and welcome back to this video today. Today, what we're going to be doing is going through exactly how you can persuade your way to $100,000 per year in four steps. So what I've gone ahead and done to provide as much value for you as possible is I've created a downloadable PDF and an MP3 audio file that you can download. The link to that is in the description. I don't want your email address to retarget you or any of that kind of stuff. This is purely just to provide you with as much value as possible. What I do recommend if you've got a printer is print off that PDF, get a pen out and uh, make some notes of this because I'm really, really about to drop the value here. This is some high level stuff that if you follow really is going to be uh, a game changer in terms of your persuasion skill set and taking your business to the next level. And I've gone ahead and included an MP3 file as well. So if you like your morning walks, you can download that, listen to it again and um, continue to stay ahead of the curve and continue to learn this stuff. I think the power of persuasion would be the most powerful superpower in the world. Now, this is a quote. I'm unsure exactly on, on who it's from, but I completely agree. If you had the power to persuade better than anybody else in the world, it would be one of the most powerful superpowers you could have because you could basically get whatever you want because you can persuade your way to anything. Um, the, the way the human brain works is there are certain things that we can do that psychologically trigger different reactions and different emotions and that is you know what we're going to be going through today is how we can use these persuasion uh, persuasion techniques for good and how you can use that to close more clients the success of many online services today depends on the company's ability to persuade users to take specific actions think about it if you can persuade users to take specific actions, whether that's to subscribe to an email list, whether that's to buy your product, whether that's to send you a testimonial. The company that can get people to take the actions that they want them to take are going to be the most successful. And that all comes from the ability to persuade. If you can persuade people to do stuff and to do what you want, as long as it's all above board and it's good, of course, and used for good reasons, then, um, you know, you can really take yourself far of this. So what are the four methods that you can implement today. The first one that we're gonna be going through is fair exchange. The second one is disrupt the, the reframe. Number three, minute flattery. And number four, hedonic value. So let's not mess about and jump straight to the first one, which is fair exchange. So fair exchange is no robbery. Swapping two things or subjects of equal value is considered an honest deal. Use the principle of reciprocity to ensure a fair sense of value exchange. A helps B and B helps A. Any form of business, it is so important to use fair exchange. Whatever you're giving your customer, they expect the same in return. It needs to be a fair exchange. If I said to you, for no reason, give me a thousand and I'll give you one dollar back. You're not gonna do it, that is not a fair exchange. If I said to you, pay my thousand dollar service fee and I'll drive you 10 grand a month in new revenue, that's a fair exchange. I'm getting paid $1,000 every single month to do my job and you're making 10 grand a month in revenue from my social media marketing services. That is what's known as a fair deal. Your email address, swapping your email address for a free PDF, a 20% discount, that is something that is considered a fair exchange. Again, here's some more examples. Requesting a website visitor's email in return for discounts or free shipping is a fair trade. Lowering your, lowering your price to meet a client's budget in return for a few client referrals is considered a fair trade. You know, if you have a client that say, you, you price your services, you say this is gonna be two grand a month and they generally cannot afford it, a fair trade may be, you know what, I can drop my price to $1,500, but I'm gonna need a few referrals from you. That's a fair exchange. You're dropping $500 per month in your, your fee, but then if they send you two or three clients that are gonna end up paying you two grand a month, well, that's a win-win for you. All they have to do is simply give you some names of people, some referrals, and they're saving $500 a month. That is a fair exchange. A client paying you a large $5,000 retainer fee when you are getting them a large return on investment is a fair trade. You know, people all the time always ask, how on earth can you charge so much for these retainers for social media marketing services? Well, it's simple. If I'm providing them a huge return on investment and I'm turning that five grand into 20 grand, 30 grand, 50 grand, 
they're going to continue to pay me that five grand every single month because it is a fair exchange. So whatever you're doing in business, always ask yourself, you know, what is a fair exchange? What is a fair exchange for my customers? And what do I kind of expect in return for that? And if you do that in all areas of your life, in all areas of business, you're going to be successful. The second persuasion technique here is something called disrupt the reframe. This is one of the most effective and questionable compliance techniques. This works by deliberately reframing a request as to confuse the intended recipient, thus lowering the resistance to influence. Let me show you some examples. So let's say you are selling your service for a thousand pound a month. You could say this, the price is a hundred thousand pennies. That's one thousand pound. What a steal. So what this is doing is it's a pattern interrupt. It's disrupting and then reframing. So you're disrupting and with a pattern interrupt by saying the price is a hundred thousand pennies. That's so, why would anybody say that? That's a complete pattern interrupt. A hundred thousand pennies. Sounds like quite a lot. That's one thousand pound. What still? You've disrupted, you've done the pattern interrupt, and it reframes that one thousand pound price tag. Let's look at it from another angle. It's a pattern interrupt that catches your potential client off guard. So you could also say something like this. Some of our clients pay us a hundred and fifty grand a year, but don't worry, we're only going to charge you two thousand pound per month. Huge, huge disruption, pattern interrupt, and then a reframe. You're reframing that £2,000 to all of a sudden seem like a small amount. If, you, if I never did that disruption and said it's gonna, some clients pay 150 grand a year, well, two grand a month compared to 150 grand a year is pennies, it's nothing. So that's completely reframed that two grand price tag. Whereas if I just came straight out and said, yeah, it's going to be two grand, they might be thinking, bloody hell, £2,000 a month. Do you see the difference? Disrupt pattern interrupt, and then reframe. This is a really, really, really powerful persuasion technique that completely reframes that £2,000 price tag. But you can do this with whatever you want, you know? Get experimental, do something that's a, a disruption, and uh, do something that's gonna allow you to reframe that, that price tag. It works specifically well in terms of pricing. The third tip here for you I've got is a little flattery. Key word, though, <laughs> is little. Too much flattery is a bad thing. If you go all out and, and it's obvious and you can tell by the way, when someone's trying to flatter you to get your attention, to try to get you to do stuff, when you go too hard on the flattery, it comes across sleazy, it's not very professional. But a little flattery and being genuine about it is a good thing. So here are some examples. Little things like this, like you know, you're a smart guy, so you, know, you understand this, you're a smart guy, you, know, you understand the value that this service can bring. It's a little flattery, you know, you're a smart guy, you're gonna understand this. You're reasoning with them, and, and you're also being genuine. You're not saying, oh my God, you're so such a nice person, you're so clever, that's sleazy. You're a smart guy, so you're gonna understand this. Again, a tiny bit of flattery, but it goes a long way, it helps you to build that rapport. So another, another example here, we don't work with every company, we're actually very selective, but you seem like a great person and we'd love to help you. A little flattery. You seem like such a great person. We'd love to help you. Little, not over the top, compared to, oh my God, I absolutely love your business. Oh my God, oh my God, like I love what you're doing. It's so amazing. That's that's a bit brown nosy. You know, there's a little fine line there that, that's not professional. Keyword on little again. We love what you're doing with X business. You're clearly so passionate about your company and it really rubs off on the quality of your work. Again, a compliment helps you build rapport. Just a little bit of flattery. That will help you persuade. And it's, it's little things like that that compound on top of each other that allow you to stand up from the crowd, allow you to build that relationship and be sincere with it. Don't compliment somebody for the sake of it and for, for, to lie and just, you know, be persuasive. Be genuine about it. Find something that you like about that person. If they generally are passionate about their business, say, look, I love how passionate you are about your company. It really rubs off. And you can tell in the quality of your products. Saying that is genuine and people can tell. So, Obviously, this is a case-by-case -case basis, but um, yeah, find little ways to chuck in a bit of flattery, and, and be, but be professional about it, and don't go, go too ham. So be, be sincere. It will be obvious if you're lying. Find subtle ways to compliment, and it will help build rapport. Number four, the final thing we're going to go over in this video today is hedonic value. This is very powerful, this is. So you may be thinking, what on earth is hedonic? What does that mean? Or hedonistic? And hedonic is derived from the Greek term sweet. 
This is closely linked to approaching pleasure, pleasure and avoiding pain. So how can you make your clients experience your hedonic value? How can you make sure your clients experience max pleasure and minimum pain? Okay, what is your company's hedonic value? So I created a couple of graphs here for you to look at. Over on the left-hand side, this is kind of what the average business's hedonic treadmill look like. On the right, we've got the happiness levels. Along the bottom axes, we've got time. So naturally, over time, you can see here, they've got temporary euphoria where it's like, well, this is great. But then it comes down to the sort of happiness resting point. Then sometimes, boom, goes down into that temporary misery down here and goes back up to the happiness resting point. This is just like the scenario for most people when it comes to their hedonic value. This is the what most businesses look like. Sometimes it's great, sometimes it's bad. Most of the time, it just rests at this happiness point. What instead you want your clients to experience is your max pleasure and minimum pain. Instead, what should happen is you should always be at this euphoria resting point with a slight increase over time constantly providing a better and better and better and better service and making sure every single thing you do is a moment of euphoria. Make sure that your client's experience and your customer's experience is great from the second they enter your enter your pipeline, from the second they become a potential customer and just a prospect to the second they become a buyer of your first product, your second product, when they're a client for 12 months, 24 months, five years, you constantly wanna be on that increase. And the resting point doesn't just need to be a happiness resting point with the chance to go down to temporary misery, it wants to be constant resting euphoria. They know that this is the best experience. It's so powerful. I love working with this company. If you can do that and you can make your your client experience constant max pleasure with you and minimum pain, it's, it's gonna be a game changer for you. Your business will grow itself. You need to tap into your client's propensity for pleasure by designing an amazing experience. Think about it, the actions you do change the state of your customers. The state of your customers, the current state of your customers, change the way they view your business. If your actions put your customers into a fantastic state, the way that they view your business is going to be fantastic. If you put them in a constant pleasure state, they're gonna view your business in a different way, view you in a different way, than if your actions put them in a, in a miserable state. If they keep getting minimum pleasure, then they're gonna view you in a minimum way. They're not gonna treat you with respect and they're not gonna recommend you to anyone. If your actions are fantastic, your experience, what you do, your, you know, your results, your onboarding process, all of that stuff is fantastic. You're gonna put your customers and your clients into a state of maximum euphoria. They're gonna view your, your business differently. You're gonna, they're gonna view your business amazingly and their actions are going to lead to giving you more customers, giving you referrals. People are, going to, people are going to start asking them like, yo, John, like how on earth have you scaled your business so much? Your social pages are looking amazing. Like who's doing that? And they're going to be screaming, this is X agency, okay? So understand that by designing an absolutely an amazing experience from the second they become a prospect to the second they sign that deal and they're a client and however long they stay with you, if you design an amazing experience from your onboarding process to your results, to your team, to your processes, everything, okay? If that's great and that's amazing, well, you know, your results will be amazing. Your, your business will grow itself. And that's very, very important to understand. So when it comes to your hedonic value and maximum pleasure, minimum pain, I want you to ask yourself, in your agency right now, how is your communication? How fluent is your onboarding process? Are you prompt to your meetings? You know, think about it. Do you rock up to your meetings 10 minutes late? Do you always constantly rearrange your meetings? That's unprofessional, you shouldn't be doing that. Do you show up on time, on the dot, it's five o'clock on the dot, ring, you're calling. Professional, prompt to meetings, you know? How fluent is your onboarding process? Is it smooth, is it easy to understand? Is it professional, is it more professional than, than other agencies? How's your communication? Is it professional, fair, understanding, timely? Is it in 10 million different platforms and communication gets lost? Or is it kept in Slack in one communication tool? And is it, is it easy? You know, how is, how is your communication in your business? How good is your attention to detail? Do you forget things and have to rock up? And, oh, so sorry, I forgot about that. Or do you pay attention to detail, take action on those things? How good is your service delivery? Do you deliver average results or do you deliver outstanding results? How professional are your monthly reports? Do you just send them over an Excel document with some figures in? Or do you go the extra mile? 
get a VA to do it or do you do it yourself and create a really professional, branded, high quality report? All of these things, um, uh, you know, implement implemented together uh, are going to make you stand out, you know? Do you send your clients Christmas cards? This is another thing. Do you have a genuine relationship with your clients or are they just like paying you? Like, you know, do you just see it as like, oh yeah, they pay me, they pay the bills? Or do you generally think, mate, I absolutely, I've got a fantastic relationship with my clients. And do you send them Christmas cards? Do you have a fantastic relationship, a long-term relationship? Have you got rapport with them? Because all of these things is, are things that I wanna, want you to ask yourself in your business. Take a step back and really think, how good is my communication? How fluent is my onboarding process? How, how good am I to meetings? Do I rock up on time or do I always change? Am I flaky? How good is your attention to detail? How good is your service delivery? How professional are your monthly reports? Do you send your clients Christmas cards or Christmas messages and birthday messages? All of these things make up your hedonic value. And if you get all of these things right, your business will grow itself, like I mentioned. So how can you improve in these areas? Nobody's perfect. Every business can always improve. You can always improve your communication. You can always improve your onboarding process. The key point here is to look at what, what things are, are you struggling with the most, what, which one of these is, is probably the worst for you right now, and tackling one thing at a time and always constantly be on the lookout for areas to improve. All you need to go and do now is set some meetings, close some clients and implement what you have learned, okay? Just to go back through this now. So, we've got fair exchange, okay? Is what you're doing helping your client and your customers and are you getting a fair payment in return for that? What is that fair exchange look like? Disrupt and then reframe when it comes to payments. A really fantastic way to do this, again, some clients pay 150 grand per year, but don't worry, I'm gonna charge you 2K per month. Disrupt, pattern interrupt, it reframes that 2K payment to be lower than it is. A little flattery, again, not too much, okay? Just a little bit. And then, what is your hedonic value? You don't wanna have this, you don't wanna have this. You don't wanna have ups and downs and temporary misery, temporary euphoria, and then a happiness resting point. You want to constantly be in that euphoria resting point with a slight increase over time. Super, super important. And ask yourself, how can I improve in these areas? So like I said, all you need to go do now is set some meetings and close some clients and implement what you've learned. So I hope you found a ton of value in this video. What I want you to do is comment down below your biggest takeaway lesson and share it with the community. What is your biggest lesson from this video? What have you learned most that you're going to go on to implement today? I wanna know in the comment sections. So just to end up this video, are you interested in some high level training? You can go ahead and join the Social Media Marketing Academy. So for those that aren't familiar, I have a training program that teaches the exact A to Z on how to start and scale a social media marketing agency from scratch. Um, the great thing about this is I use completely unique methods. I show you how to get warm leads, utilizing freelance websites, how to automate and build a team, and uh, how to delegate, how to get results yourself. It's a real training program that covers everything. Just so you can see here, here are some fantastic results. I'm not gonna go through them. You can pause the video and see yourself, but we've got several people here who landed four clients within 10 days, a couple of people who hit six figures, a couple of people here have landed 10K, you know, all sorts of different results, which you can get yourself. The link to that will be in the description down below. Thank you guys for watching anyway. Make sure to subscribe, drop, drop a like, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.